Hello YouTube, Lyricide17 here, but you can just call me Travis, and welcome back for another collection update. Uh, don't have a whole lot to uh, tell you before we get into it, uh, other than I never did that uh, uh, tape update by itself, so I'm just going to include it in this one so I have way too much stuff to show you. Uh, so forgive me if this ends up being super, super long. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's jump in. In the background, we are listening to, I just showed this off last week, this is Streamer, a uh, new wave of traditional heavy metal band, on the uh, more on the speed metal side of things, out of Spain. This is their album from last year, Now or Never. Really like this one. Check it out. All right, first one up. Super excited to have gotten this one. Uh, this is, I should have wrote down what the English translation is, but it doesn't matter. Uh... This is the new Druk uh, album. Uh, awesome black metal band out of Ukraine. If you're not familiar with them, this album doesn't actually come out until this upcoming Friday, but it arrived to me uh, a week early, so that was super awesome. Uh, really into this band a lot. Uh, would consider them, you know, a favorite band. You know, not really. It depends on what you how how many bands are considered favorite bands. Uh, but uh, really, really like this one. Uh, I think the title of the album translates, because this is what it is, uh, I believe it translates to something like, uh, They Always Dream of the Spring, or something like that. Uh, but great, great, awesome band, uh, definitely in that, uh, you know, that Burzum, uh, super repetitive, uh, trancing, trance-like, uh, hypnotic riff, uh, black metal, uh, and they do a really, really great job of it. Uh, I would say, I, I, I think some people uh, they have the opinion that their last couple albums uh, aren't up to, uh, or last few maybe even, aren't quite up to uh, the quality of the uh, first uh, half of the discography, maybe up through like, what, Blood in Their Wells or Estrangement. Uh, but I, I, think, I think all their releases are awesome. I, I might say their last couple, uh, what, Eternal Turn of the Wheel and... Uh, uh, whatever that. Oh, what is the other one after that one called? Uh, oh, it's right here. Huh? Um, oh, Furrow Cut Short. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Furrow Cut Short. I, I might say that I think those are, uh, maybe I don't like them as much as the other one, but I still think they're pretty good. Uh, but regardless, uh, if that's true, uh, I think this one is a step back up uh, to the to the great quality. Uh, just the opening song alone is just amazing. Uh, the, not 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 the not the intro riff, but the riff right after that one is just that is a great riff. Uh, they do a really good job of like having uh, you know con uh, what's the word I want uh, compound riffs where like it's a riff that's really has multiple different parts on it before. It goes back to the repetition. They, they just do a great job of it. Uh, I really feel like, uh, what's his name, Roman? His vocals are actually really excellent on this one. Uh, he's always sort of had that kind of like, uh, kind of like forced, throaty black metal style to him, uh, which is, it's not more of a screech, it's more of like a uh, to it, and which is it, which has been fine because, you know, that's not the reason I'm, I'm, I'm not listening to uh, to hear the vocals. I'm hearing them. To listen to those hypnotic riffs and uh yeah but regardless i feel like uh his vocals are kind of just a little bit better on this one uh not a whole lot to show on the inside of here unless you can re uh read uh ukrainian i guess there is there's these this art pieces uh but unless you can read ukrainian which i can't uh not a whole lot of information going on for you in this in this the art pieces are pretty cool though I like the black and white style. Uh, this is out through uh, Seasons of Mist, so shout out to Seasons of Mist for uh, getting this to be a week early. Yeah, if you if you like this band, if you like any of their albums, uh, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely check this one out. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Uh, you know they they've released like I think three splits since their last album, which was what 2015 I think. Uh, I haven't really listened to the, the splits really. I kind of avoid, I don't want to say avoid splits, but I kind of just don't listen to splits in general. Unless until I sort of get to like a discography completion territory. 
So uh, I'm not really sure uh, what the general consensus of those were. I do feel like the one that they did last year with uh, Pat Paysage de Ver uh, was pretty popular. Or at least, you know, the, 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 the records. They sold out fast. But uh, anyway, really into this band. Really into this album. Listen to it, I don't know, five, six times already. Really great. Uh, recommend it for anyone who's into this band. So yeah, that's uh, Drutk. And uh, something like uh, They Always Dream of the Spring. All right, uh, next up, uh, another 2018 release. Uh, ordered this one at the very end of January, I think. Uh, finally uh, came in, knew, knew that was gonna be the case. Uh, super excited to uh, get it. I actually haven't listened to the, t the tape yet, but I've, I've listened to the digital tracks because they were sold on Bandcamp uh, a million times. So uh, yeah, released on uh, Malam Arcana. Let's see when I would know what this is gonna be. Uh, this is uh, Fless with their debut album. They did release a demo last year, which I would love to get a copy of, but uh, really happy to get a copy of this. Uh, the title of which is, and I love this title, Frenzied Bloodlust Underneath a Black Moon. Uh, this is a Canadian raw black metal band, uh, one man project as far as I know. Comes on this cool, clear red tape with like the sticker with like the tree branches and stuff on it. That's uh, pretty freaking rad, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, two songs. Uh, both of them very long in length. The first one's like over 16 minutes, and the other one's over 10. Uh, so yeah, just just two savage, raw black metal tracks. Uh, lots of uh, ambience mixed in there as well, for good measure. Uh, just, you know, just savage razor blade meat cleaver riffs. Uh, vocals, just screechy as hell, uh, just really, really good stuff, uh, re released during the blood moon of 2018, as it says here, so yeah, here's the cover, really like this, uh, this cover, here's the title, and then the, the back of the J card there, it's another cool picture, then you got your info, which is pretty much just, uh, when it's released, the two songs, which are the title track, Frenzy Bloodlust Underneath a Black Moon, and uh, Vampiric Drain Through Hypnotic Force, and then released through Mellon Arcana Productions. I got number 8 of 60. I actually wasn't aware of what the <clears throat> limitation was for this, so yeah, 60 copies. And as I've been liking to do lately, I'm going to read this little... Uh, a little part here. <sighs> For centuries, I have stalked mankind, witnessing their inevitable and gradual demise. To stroll through vermin-infested streets, and to see them succumb to the pestilence is alluring to my eyes. From the blackest shadows, I have gazed with intense det detestation. I have bathed in the energy of the moon while savoring the taste of their flesh. Preying on the unsuspecting, coveting their life force. Their agony is my elixir. I take it without remorse. I relish in the suffering of the pathetic souls that wander this abysmal plain. Cursed to roam forever. With solely eyes and vampiric fangs, I will gladly feed and drain. So yeah, definitely I'll leave a link, as I always do, to everything that I show, uh, to the band camp, uh, so you can definitely at least listen to this. I don't know if there's going to be a repress or anything like that, or of this or not, but uh, if nothing else, check it out on Bandcamp and uh, enjoy enjoy uh, Frenzied Bloodlust Underneath a Black Moon by Fless. Just, like I said, awesome, savage, raw black metal uh, out of Canada. Uh, and while we're on cassettes, let's just, uh, let's just get that over with. Uh, first one up. Uh, <laughs> this is probably going to start being a problem. For me, uh, this one is uh, Road Rash, Thunder in Paradise. This is a uh, new wave of traditional heavy metal band out of Canada, just north of me in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, they kind of air on the side of like uh, sort of like thrashy punk speed metal with a new wave of British heavy metal uh, flavor to them. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, I did a few weeks ago pick up the CD and. Uh, because I'm a sick, sick person and I'm obsessed with cassettes now, I really decided I wanted to pick up the cassette too, so I did that. Uh, hopefully that doesn't become too common, but uh, it probably will be coming, becoming common. Uh, comes on this uh, red tape with 
the uh, Road Rash sunglasses logo. J card. Blank on the inside. Yeah, super cool stuff. Don't want to spend too much time on this one since I talked about it just recently. But uh, yeah, I'll leave a link. Check it out. Throw Road Rash, Thunder, in Paradise. All right, let's get into uh, the cassettes that I never did the video for. I got five of them here. I only listened. I listened to a, a few of them only one time, and then and then the ones that I liked more, I, I listened to uh, a few times. So let, let's talk about uh, the ones I liked more first. Uh, this one uh, I ordered by by itself, so we'll talk about that one first. Uh, this is Lampier uh, with a Forgot Arts of Penetration. This is a uh, compilation of uh, two demos. I think I think that just the two demos they have released comes out on this blank, no labeled tape or clear no labeled tape this is some raw black metal uh not sure I, you know all the rest of these i'm not really sure where these guys are from i think for the most part they're all from the u.s but you uh information is uh hard to come by this is released on perverse homage my first perverse homage release uh i like the really heavy uh paper use here for the cardstock uh i like this uh cover for the tape backside here information on the songs this is uh, all music and curses evoked to perform by Lampier so Lampier is also the name of the guy by the way uh, I've come across a new thing that I want to happen you know how I've in the past talked about the trifecta meaning a band album and song that all share the same name for example the opening track from Black Sabbath debut album, which is called Black Sabbath, and that song is called Black Sabbath. Now I would like a black metal artist uh, who uses the band. So I want, like, for example, I want Lampier to release an album called Lampier, and I want it to have a song called Lampier on it. So it's a so it's a qua a quadrant. The 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 the, the band, the song the album, and the actual member of the band, all sharing the same name. So Lampier or anyone else, Vardan, uh, Vol, any other band that's like that, get on it. Uh, so yeah. There's our guy Lampier. Uh, yeah, Raw Black Metal. Uh, pretty, uh, the production is, I wouldn't say super lo-fi, but it's, it's definitely more on the lo-fi end of things. Uh, kind of made... Uh, the guitar is harder to hear for me than I probably would have liked, but still, I uh, really like this release. It's pretty good, uh, especially enjoy the vocals on this on this release. Uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, don't don't super love this or anything, but uh, I, I do think this is pretty cool. And definitely, if you're in a raw black metal, it's definitely probably something you would want to check out. So yeah, uh, Lampier, uh, Forgotten Arts of Penetration. All right, and then the rest of these remaining four, uh, I all I ordered through a uh, label out of Ohio, a cassette-only label called Lampshade Tapes. Uh, these guys first got onto my radar. Uh, White Filth Vinyl mentioned them, and then uh, and then a guy who I'm friendly with on uh, on Instagram who constantly just sends me links to uh, uh, rare tapes and stuff. Uh, shot me a link to uh, when they had new stuff up and so I ordered some tapes and yeah I'm going to show them to you now so the first one and this is probably my favorite one of this whole bunch uh, this is a Witch Moon with Spectral Shadows this is a 2018 release out on like I said lampshade tapes I like this I like the lampshade logo here just comes on a uh, no label plain white tape which seems to be sort of the trend generally for this label which is kind of cool uh, this is a raw black metal, definitely sort of more in the uh, kind of uh, in the kind of like the black sleaze kind of uh, vein. So it's really like like just like uh, wall of sound bombasticness. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot to tell you about this one. Uh, show you the here's the cover again. Tracks and then some uh, recorded when it's recorded, yeah. And a picture of a little cemetery, yeah. See, I really like this one. This, like I said, this is my favorite one of the bunch. Uh, just some really solid raw black metal. 
uh, you know, just really have been really into raw black metal. Uh, I would say probably the last almost a year now, just really, really uh, getting into this genre a lot and really, really, really liking it. And uh, yeah, this is a solid release out of this year. Uh, I checked today; none of the, none of these releases are are still there. They actually have barely have any of their own releases left. Uh, so I'm not sure if you can get a copy of this maybe on Discogs. Uh, but yeah, Witch Moon Spectral Shadows. Uh, next up, uh, two from the same artist. Uh, and that artist is Egyptian Ropes. I picked up uh, their Demo 1 release and then their new album, Waste. I'll talk about this one first. Uh, this is kind of like a punk black black metal barely, I would say. But uh, it does it's a definitely a combination of punk black metal. Uh, this is out of 50, 33 copies. I got number 17. Fuck you, as it says here to me. So even even on the punk black metal side of things, they're they're telling everyone to fuck off. Uh, I like that it came in this kind of what made me think of like 80s style uh, tape case. But yeah, uh, this one is like the production quality is super bad, so uh, probably too bad for my taste. It's kind of uh, just comes in the no label black tape. Kind of, uh, for the most part, for me at least, kind of undiscernible. Uh, you know, I, I can make it out, but it's it's nothing that I really want to spend my time listening to. And that's that's not no fault to them. That's what they wanted to release. Just it's not for me. Uh, there's our track listing. Uh, you know, cool, nice, heavy car stock on this one. Uh, I like the uh, I like that the you know they did that kind of you know black and white with the border trend that's been going on, but they kind of also made it so it's like, you know, it's not straight, it's kind of sloppily done, very kind of punk, maybe. I, li I liked, I thought I appreciated that. Uh, so yeah, nothing really to say about this one. Didn't really, couldn't really get into this one. Listed once. Don't know if I'll go back. But uh, regardless, kind of a, a, a cool thing to check out, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to support uh, small labels, and with cassettes, man, it's so easy to just, like, blind buy some shit, because it's so cheap that whatever uh, and like I said I picked up their album uh, Egyptian Tapes this one is a much m uh, better produced this one also comes on a no label black tape so don't want to get those mixed up although I'd be able to tell the difference uh, this one comes on a more paper uh, J card ooh Yeah, uh, like I said, again, uh, punky black metal. This one's a lot more, uh, like I said, discernible. I like this one a lot more. Don't like super love it or anything, but it's kind of just a cool release. It's, you know, it's not like I spend, it's not super long or anything. All these are like single-sided releases. Uh, yeah, I don't, nothing else to say about this one. Like I said, I don't really love it. Don't know if I'll probably continue on in the Egyptian Ropes discography, but, uh, you know, if you're into punky black metal, or if that sounds interesting to you, uh, definitely... Uh, give these guys a whirl, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll see if I can find some stuff on YouTube. I'm not really sure uh, what the availability of some of these bands are going to be. But uh, yeah, if I can find something, check it out. Egyptian Ropes, Waste. And then uh, the final one that I ordered from Lampshade Tapes. Uh, this is a split release uh, from Spiral Staircase and Disequilibrium. Uh, and this is, uh, here's the cover here. I'll, I'll pull it out and show you again. But this is their split, uh, uh, Spiral Staircase's half is called In the Scrying House, and then, uh, Disequilibrium's half is called, uh, Fungal Growth Adorning Treetops of Old. Comes on this, uh, no-label green tape, so I'm not even really sure, uh, may maybe someone can tell me I'm an idiot and there's a way I can tell, obviously, which is side A and which is side B. Uh, so I just went with whichever side was going to play first. That was side A. I have no idea if that's right or not, but that's all I could go on. Unless someone can tell me some way that I'm an idiot, and there's a way I can tell. Uh, I, I like the aesthetic of the green. really like uh, Spiral Starcase's logo with the castle on top of it. thought that was a cool touch. Uh, this one's not single-sided, actually. It's got uh, each band's release on each side of it. 
yeah, both these bands uh, playing black metal of the raw variety. Uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, whatever was on side A, so I'm going to assume Spiral Staircase. Uh, I like that release more, um, <clears throat> but not you know a whole lot more than just the Equilibrium. They both just you know played some solid, solid black metal. Uh, but if I did have to choose, I would say that I liked uh, what I think is side A. So in this case, Spiral Staircase. But again, not totally sure on that. And yes, if, if tell me I'm an idiot. Explain to me if I can tell there's a way. I don't know. Does this mean anything? What's on the bottom of the tape? Okay, that, I don't know. Tell me if I'm an idiot. Tell me how I can tell uh, which one's which. So yeah, uh, I'll leave a link to Lampshade Tapes. Uh, like, right, like I said, right now it doesn't appear they have a whole lot of their own uh, product up. They have some stuff, looks like, from Nuclear War now. But I'll, I'll leave a link to them. Maybe just, you know, add them to your, your, uh, your favorites or whatever and check them out later or whatever. So yeah, anyway, let's move on from the tapes. I'm getting to a ramble point. Let's not get to that point. Uh, yeah, next up, let's get back to the CDs. Uh, picked up a couple of these. Uh, picked up uh, this band's first album, Sour and Extinction, like right around the time it came out, but uh, just for whatever reason, never got around to picking up uh, the uh, the other ones. Uh, guy on, uh, on YouTube who I wish would make more videos, Coltland, uh, he got me uh, to finally buckle down and pick these up. Uh, listen to the second one, which I listened to I think maybe once or twice beforehand, and then the one they released last year. I hadn't listened to that one at all. So he got me to listen to those two, and uh, yeah, let's talk about those now. Enough uh, trying to hide what they are. And that's uh, these releases from Paul Bearer, which actually like I said, so I said Sorrow and Extinction, so you might have figured it out already. This one is their uh, what 2015 release, uh, maybe 16. Foundations of Burden, and then this is the one they released last year. Heartless. Uh, yeah, they play uh, a doom metal that I think is from Arkansas. Uh, doom metal, sort of uh, maybe more on the sludgy side of things. Uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I have a really whole lot to say about these guys other than, you know, uh, I would say that uh, I think gradually I've, I'm liking their material less. I, I would say that I think Foundations of Burden is actually fairly close uh, in quality for me. Uh, to Sorrow and Extinction, their debut release. But uh, Heartless in particular, uh, don't like that one as much. I feel like it's lost uh, that kind of like, uh, I can't put it in any other quality other than just that, that fuzz quality to their sound that I really liked. Uh, felt it was a little more, I don't know, songy, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But uh, just, I don't know, from what I liked about uh, Sorrow and Extinction, and, 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 and on this one too, uh, Foundation to Burden is I like their sort of like instrumental passages a little bit more and uh, you know there just wasn't as much of that on Heartless we like the art on this one and also on the one on Sorrow and Extinction I like yeah yeah some good looking art in here too I think what lyrics and information Here, so this this art is uh, it's okay, but this one doesn't do it for me as much as those other ones. A little early on my guitar solo, How embarrassing. But yeah, uh, yeah, you probably are more aware of Paul Bear than me. But if you're not aware of Paul Bear and you to want to check out some uh, Doom that's more on the uh, sludge metal side of things, uh, definitely check out Paul Bear. They do some very, very, very fine work. And yeah, a lot of people really like uh, this album in particular, so I'm probably wrong. And uh, yeah, you should check it out. So yeah, uh, Foundations of Burden and Heartless. All right, uh, this next one up, uh, actually, um, this is, uh, I wouldn't say embarrassing, it's just it sucks for me personally that I didn't realize this came out. Uh, Let's just let's just show before I talk about it. This is uh, from the rapper. Sorry, by the way, no more metal. So I'm sorry. 
Uh, this is from the rapper Twisted Insane. This is his uh, release that came out late last year, In My Darkest Hour. Uh, he released an album uh, December 31st, 2016, uh, entitled Shoot for the Face 2. Uh, that one made my uh, top 30 list of last year. And, uh, you know, probably because I wasn't expecting him to release the album 10 months later. But uh, yeah, he released this album on Halloween of last year. So I didn't even know he released this. Uh, bummer for me. But uh, finally realized it. CDs just came out because he's always sort of delayed on releasing the CD versions. Uh, CD just came out at the beginning of February. So perfect timing. Picked it up. Uh, super, was super jacked to find out he had released an album and I didn't know about it. Uh, so when it came in the mail, and it came like two days, I think ordered it like on Sunday and it arrived on Tuesday. So shout out to Brainsick Music, his label for uh, getting that to me right away. Uh, yeah, so it popped it in immediately. And again, just awesome, awesome speed rap. If you're not familiar with Twisted Insane, uh, one of my favorite rappers. Uh, just awesome, awesome speed rapper. The dude raps faster than I can think words. And uh, this album is no different. Probably on par with the one he just released, Shoot for the Face 2. Uh, yeah, just awesome, awesome, uh, awesome, awesome songs. Uh, Beats on this one probably uh, favor the trap uh, beat variety. So if you like trap beats, this will probably be something that you probably will enjoy. If you don't like trap beats, then well, I don't know what to tell you. Probably you might not like this. I'm not sure, but uh, good stuff. Uh, you know, I really enjoy uh, his obviously his super fast rapping and also just his his very uh, syncopations and flows and stuff like that. I really enjoy that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, for the most part, he's not doing a whole lot different on this album, other than I will say that uh, he has uh, more tracks uh, than he does usually because he, he he doesn't he doesn't not do this on other albums, but he definitely upped the number of tracks that seem uh, more personal to him as opposed just to the twisted and insane uh, oh, character. We'll say uh, I, I, I did appreciate uh, he because he always does uh, the, the, those more personal songs. He always does those really really well. So I, I, did, I did appreciate, um, you know, a few more of those on this album. But yeah, if I can find some uh, links, I'll definitely link to this. Uh, or if I can, I'll just link to some of his other tracks. Uh, just insane. Definitely an awesome rapper. If you're not familiar with him, check him out. Uh, like I said, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, In My Darkest Hour by Twisted Insane. Uh, I probably should be uh, looking for an album in 2018 because I think he's released... Uh, an album every year for like the last like four or five years so uh, yeah maybe there'll be another album in 2018 stay tuned alright sticking with the rap got two more in that genre to show you uh, it should have been three but it is just two for this week uh, finally decided to uh, not be a terrible uh, person and pick up uh, albums by Run The Jewels so I picked up uh, Run The Jewels and Run The Jewels 2. Uh, I did also order Run The Jewels 3. However, when it arrived yesterday, uh, the envelope was it was just an empty envelope. Uh, which, I don't know what's going on with that. But I did already contact them. Another copy's on the way, so no big deal. Uh, if you're not familiar with Run The Jewels, this is a rap group uh, featuring Killer Mike and LP. Those are our two MCs. LP also doing uh, the majority of uh, the production on this release. Although there is, what, Little Sharma, is that his name? Uh, I'll come across it later. Uh, yeah, this really great rap group. The productions are killer. Uh, both Killer Mike and LP have great flows. Uh, I do have to say if I had to choose between the, between the two, I would choose Killer Mike. But again, both are great. Uh, great MCs, uh, you know, political lyrics, if that's your thing. Uh, but, you know, other stuff going on too. Uh, Kimmy's these nice little cool digipacks, information, and art pieces. I did like this uh, thing here at the end. Uh, LP and Killer Mike wrote this shit. LP produced this shit. Little Shalomar and co produced a bunch of this shit. Wilder Zoe co produced some of this shit. Nick Hook, Little Shalimar, LP, and Leon Kelly recorded this shit at Sneaky Studios and Snake Pit. Joey Rhea a mix of this shit and assistance from Mike Nas. Joey Laporta, Laporta and Ray Janos mastered this shit at Sterling Sound. Nicholas Gazin, 
did the art for this shit. I thought that that was uh, fun. Uh, yeah, the CD comes in the slide case, which, you know, as I've said numerous times, not really into, but all I can really do is just whine about it and, you know, move on with my life, because I'm just going to continue buying them, so what can I do about it? Came, you know, I didn't really look at this, didn't know what I was ordering, and I kind of got some surprises, so that was pretty cool. Finally looked inside, and, uh, comes with, uh, this poster. On this side, it's got, a. And our edition of uh, Killer Mike, an LP, and then on the other side we got their uh, zombie hand, give you the finger. Maybe I guess they're the same fucking in rap too, right? <laughs> uh, also came with this uh, download code, which uh, I already have the CD, so I can just rip rip it, so I don't need download code. So uh, come here's the back of the card. But uh, yeah, uh, whoever wants to have this first can have it. So. Uh, there's the download code. Uh, and then it also came with this patch, which I thought was which awesome. Uh, don't know if I'll put that on my jacket. Not that I'm opposed to putting it on my jacket, but I like to uh, to kind of keep uh, stuff with the with the releases. So I'll probably keep this with the release. But regardless, that's that's a rad thing to include. Super super cool patch. Yeah, really like this uh, this release a lot. Um, Love the song, uh, DDF, uh, H, Sea Legs. Both those tracks are awesome. Also, the opening track, Run the Jewels, is another great one. No Come Down, another great track. All these songs are great. Uh, like I said, Run the Jewels are great. The production by LP and uh, other guys like Little Shalomar, great. Uh, Killer Mike, LP, both killing it on the mic. Uh, just great, great, uh, great rap. Uh, if you're listening to rap, you probably have checked out Run the Jewels. But if you are into rap and you have not checked out Run the Jewels, uh, check uh, them out. And then also, like I said, here is Run the Jewels 2. I liked on uh, this version. I like how on all their albums they have this hand thing going on. With one of them holding the chain, the other one doing this thing. I liked on this one how they have it in like mummy hands. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, another great, just another solid. Uh, I, would, I, I pretty much put both of these on par with each other in terms of quality. I think if I had to choose one, I might I might choose Run the Jewels over Run the Jewels 2. But man, I would say the quality is pretty on par with each other. I uh, really like a bunch of these songs too. Uh, Light Cheat Steel, that's a great one. Uh, Love Again, really like that song. Uh, Early Jeopardy. Uh, all, again, all the songs are great. Again, fuck you, I guess. Uh, this one uh, has the information like the other one does. And has this art piece with Killer Mike in LP. No slide case for the CD, which I'm pretty sure that's how the uh, Run the Jewels 3 is going to come to. So that's just how it's going to be. This one did not come with a patch, which I was kind of bummed about. I was kind of hoping they would all three come with patches, but that's not how, how it came. Here is uh, <laughs> a fuck you sticker. And then uh, this one is a another fold-out poster of that same art that's on the inside, although a different color scheme. And this time we got lyrics on the other side, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, again, Run the Jewels. Really, really, really solid, great rap, you know, coming out last few years. Uh, Run the Jewels 3 on the way. I'll probably be getting that, hopefully, uh, within the next week. So I'll be showing that next week. So I'll talk about that one when I get it. But uh, yeah, if you're into rap and you have never checked out Run the Jewels, definitely recommend both of these albums, Run the Jewels and Run the Jewels 2. All right, we're almost there. We got two more to go. Uh, this one, this is a release that came out last year that's been on my wall list for a while. Uh, I think actually it was Josh Armijo was the first one I saw show this. But several other people I think I've seen show this. Uh, Mike Town. And I think maybe actually Coltland too. I think did it maybe make his top uh, list of the year. I can't remember. Uh, but I, I know he does like it though. Uh, and that is uh, the demonstration by Drab Majesty. Uh, yeah, like I said, this one's been on my wall list for a while. Haven't uh, pulled the trigger till just now. Uh, I've been into pop, uh, poppier sides of thing, th poppier sides of things. 
lately, and uh, yeah, this is uh, just fit that bill perfectly. It comes on this uh, slide case, which actually has an end, like a. Uh, I like this aesthetic with the shininess and the shiny blocks. Uh, this is a one-man project out of, uh, I think, California. Uh, pseudonym Deb Demure, I think is what it is. Uh, yeah, uh, this is like some cool, like, uh, it kind of akins back to like, kind of like a uh, uh, new wavy uh, 80s uh, goth rock pop kind of stuff. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, the the opening track induction into Dot in the Sky that is uh, just like immediately sold me on this release. Not a whole lot going on with the uh, liner notes here. Some information on the back. Uh, but yeah, just you know, really cool stuff. Here. If uh, you know, if, if if new wave goth uh, pop rocks, you know that kind of thing sounds interesting to you. Uh, this definitely is something that would probably uh, be worth checking out. And going on below the disc. No. But yeah, really like this one. Don't super love it. Uh, but uh, I do like it a lot. I think it's pretty good. At least on Dace Records or something like that. Uh, there's a full length that came up before this. I would like to check out to see if it sounds similar. But yeah, really, really like this. I think it's pretty good. Uh, the demonstration by Drab Majesty, just you know, very cool. Uh, you know, ha just has that very uh, '80s uh, new wave goth sound to it. Uh, vocals just kind of very melancholy, uh, kind of like just dry, sorrowful things. I don't know how to really go. Listen to it, check it out. Uh, Drab Majesty demonstration. All right, last one. We're getting there. I apologize. All right, this one is pop. So if it's like total pop, so if you wanted to check out now, that's cool too. Uh, this is an EP just released this year. This is uh, Werewolf with V's in their uh, debut release, Electric Blue. This is a, a two-piece, uh, Kelsey and Dylan. Uh, what's their last names? Uh, Dylan Gallagher and Kelsey... Laray. They're out of California. This is a very uh, like a synth pop, electric pop, uh, very uh, cool stuff. Very uh, very poppy, very uh, catchy stuff. Uh, really like the song. The song is Lemonade, Cruel Games, and Start Again, uh, which are one, three, and five. So for me personally, they spaced them well. I do like the other two songs too. Five tracks. Uh, yeah, not, not a whole lot to really say about this one other than it's, you know, it's just really cool, uh, catchy synth pop. So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely check it out. Came with this fun little note on this electric blue uh, note, which very goes well with the aesthetic of the album, which is called Electric Blue. It says, Dear Travis, thank you so much for purchasing Electric Blue. Our wolf pack is growing and it means the world to have your support. Please stay in touch, and hope to see you at our show soon. Kelsey and Dylan. Sorry to, to spoil it now, but I'm probably not going to go to your show, because I don't go to shows. Uh, but yeah, if you're into pop music, uh, definitely check out Electric Blue uh, by Werewolf with V's. Uh, yeah, I'll leave a link to their band camp. Check it out. Right, we made it. Not as bad as I thought. Didn't quite make it to 40 minutes. Maybe we'll be at 40 minutes by the time I'm done rambling here, but hopefully not. Let's stop before we get to that point. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, if you are familiar with any of these releases, please let me know what you think of them. And, uh... Yeah, that's it. Have a good day.